To understand the triumph of cars traveling through this covered bridge in Bartonsville, Vermont, oh my God. you've got to start here. August of 2011, Tropical Storm Irene swept through the tiny village, taking the bridge with it. In the winter, we'd all come down here to go skating and play hockey. The collapse summer, was captured by Sue Hammond, a fifth generation Bartonsville resident. It was a strong, I mean, proud exit in a way. <laughs> This one really had a piece of your heart. Oh, it did. Yeah, I mean, this that cover bridge, that was my entry home. You know, no matter where I went in the world, when I came down that road off of the highway and into Bartonsville, the cover bridge was my gateway. I knew I was home. It had stood for 141 years, one of the oldest covered bridges in a state filled with them. By the time it landed in a farmer's field downstream, a decision had already been made upstream. We all turned to each other and said, we're not having a concrete bridge in Bartonsville. We're going to fight to get our cover bridge back. And the feeling was what? Determination. Now, after cobbling together insurance money, government aid, and private donations, Bartonsville is getting more than its bridge back. It's restoring some of its soul. Which is why, as Sue Hammond watched Superstorm Sandy wash the Jersey Shore's landmarks into the ocean, she could relate. With the right resources and with the right um, community engagement, I think you, know, you can pick up the pieces and rebuild and rebuild in a way that's appropriate for your own community. In the green mountains of Vermont, this new covered bridge is more than just a symbol. It's a guide for Sandy's victims, a hopeful, Sign of the Times. Jim Axelrod, CBS News, Bartonsville, Vermont.